How to earn $300 a day with AI agents. How to earn $2,000 a week with AI agents. Earn $50,000 all by using AI agents. AI agents, AI agents, AI agents, AI agents. Yes, it is absolutely true. My YouTube recommendations feed has become filled with videos on how to make money with AI agents. And it's actually quite interesting because you see, an AI agent is not a robot. Nope, instead, this is an AI agent. It is an autonomous software entity that can reason, plan, and take action by itself without human intervention. And well, right now, lots of companies are buying these and it's been reported that they're paying on average $6,000 to $300,000 per agent. Wow, that's kind of crazy. So it's no wonder lots of tutorials are up here on YouTube teaching how to do this. However, something has always surprised me whenever I've seen these tutorial videos recommended to me. And it's this, lots of them said that even if you have no coding experience, you can do this just by clicking buttons. And well, you know what? I'm not a developer, I have no coding experience. And so you know what, I've decided to put it to the test. And so for the next four weeks, I'm gonna try this myself. And I'm gonna see if one, does this actually work for non-techie people like me who can't code? And two, perhaps most importantly, how much money can I actually make doing this? Okay, so it is day one of the experiment. And today I'm gonna to be figuring out what software that I can use to create these agents without having to know any code. Yep, and so what I did was I watched a lot of videos and while there were alternatives, the most popular software that people were using was this, N8N. And I quickly discovered that there are two versions of N8N. One is a free open source model that you can download and install from GitHub. And secondly, there is the cloud-based version, which has a monthly cost. All right, so here's something interesting, right? So when I discovered that there was a free version of N8N, I thought, ah, why would I use the paid version when I can just use the version from GitHub for free? But I've been looking into it some more and I've discovered that if I want to go with the free open source version, that I'm going to have to be willing to take care of things like hosting, firewalls, and databases all by myself. And well, as I said yesterday, I'm not really that much of a techie person. And so while I do have a general idea about what hosting, databases, and firewalls are, I don't know how to set them up or manage them or do anything like that, you know? And so instead, I honestly just came to ChatGPT and I asked it which of the paid cloud-based versions that I should get and it recommended the pro plan. So yes, I just registered for a free trial account for the pro plan and then I just filled out my details. And then after confirming my email address, it got me to complete a little survey, which I'm not really sure if the answers you fill out here actually matter anyway, but after that was done, I launched my account and then that was it. I was now in N18. And so now you can just click to start a new project and then you can click the plus icon and type in AI agent and select it. Then when the screen pops up, just click outside of it. And then that's it. You've now added in an empty AI agent that you can now customize. Nice. All right, so it is day two of the experiment. And I think that today is gonna be the hardest day. And that is because I have set myself a huge challenge today. I am going to build and customize my first ever working agent. And so to do that, I knew that I would need to follow a tutorial. And there are quite a lot of tutorials already on YouTube for free that show a beginner-friendly AI agent to set up step-by-step. Step. Ultimately though, I did settle on this tutorial here since I figured that I at least have the comprehension level of a 10-year-old. But yes, this tutorial was pretty simple. It teaches you how to create an AI agent that you can send a message to and then get it to send emails out on your behalf. And so to get started, I clicked on the brain. The brain of an agent is, surprise, surprise, a chatbot LLM like ChatGPT. And so I selected OpenAI from the chatbots. And then when I did, a bunch of options came up. Now, this is when things started to get confusing for me as a non-techie person because now it was asking me to add in a credential. Because you see, here's the thing, right? As I have now discovered, it is not free for your agent to use ChatGPT. Each time it uses it, it will use paid credits. And the more advanced of a model you select from ChatGPT, the more expensive the credits are. 
So really, you want to select as simple of a model as possible to save yourself some money. Okay, so what I've figured out is that we now need to create an open AI account that will let us generate secret API keys. And then we need to come back to our AI agent and insert one of these secret API keys into its brain. That way when we do that, it will prove that yes, we control this agent and yes, we are happy to be charged money for the credits that it uses. And well, unfortunately, the video tutorial I was using did not actually tell me how to generate an API key. Instead, I had to read over the OpenAI support documents and I had to figure it out for myself. And so here's what I did. I came to the OpenAI website and I selected the API page and then I clicked to register for a developer account and I signed up. Then once inside, I selected to create my first API key. And then I just added in my organization name. This is just to keep things easy for yourself for reference. So it doesn't really matter what you put here. I also didn't add any team members since I have none. And I just named it whatever I wanted. Again, it doesn't matter. It's just for your reference. And then I just clicked copy and I pasted it back into my agent and selected to connect them. And it worked, it was now connected. So then next I opened up my OpenAI API profile and I selected on billing and I added in a credit card and then I selected to add the minimum amount of money I needed, which turned out at the time to be $5. Then I came back to N8N and I selected to use ChatGPT for Mini as that was what the tutorial had also picked. And then I came back and opened the chat and tested the agent and it worked. It responded back to me. And then out of curiosity, I came back and checked to see if I had been charged for that interaction. And I had, I got charged one cent, which I found interesting because I'd remembered that earlier, N8N had told me that I could get 100 free API credits, yet I never did actually get these. And so honestly, I don't actually know what I did wrong to miss out on my free credits. And so if anyone is watching and knows what I did wrong, please let me know in the comment section of this video. But yes, either way, after this, it was onto adding a memory because currently if I tell it that I live in New Zealand and then I ask it where I live, it won't be able to tell me because it doesn't yet have a memory plugged into it. And that's actually, believe it or not, a feature, not a bug. Remembering past conversations requires it to store data and it takes resources to store data. So that's why it's optional. But for us, we want a memory node for our agent. So I click to add one. Now, out of these, the easiest one most people use is the window buffer memory, which is the N8N's own internal storage memory. Then all you need to do is select how many conversations it will remember. So for a moderately complex agent, 10 is usually used. For a more complex bot, 20 is used instead. But for a simple bot like this, five is the most commonly used number. So really, it's just a balance of resources. The more memory I give it, the more data that it's gonna have to store, which is gonna cost me more money. Money. But yes, now you can click the empty space on your screen to close the window and you will see that the memory node has been added. And so now we can run a test to see if it is working. Yay! But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Me. Yes, I am sponsoring my own video today to let you know that if you would like to know how I make money with AI tools by generating AI art and then selling it onto products like shirts, then you should be sure to download a copy of my free ebook, The Six Steps at Six Figure Online Stores Follow, to make over $10,000 a month with print on demand. You'll find a link to download my free ebook in the video description. But anyway, back to the video. So, yes, we can now run a test to make sure that we installed the memory node correctly. We can tell it something about ourselves and then we can follow it up asking a question about what we told it and now you can see that it remembers that I live in New Zealand and it will remember that for five chat messages which is pretty cool and also here's a quick tip you can click and hold and drag these nodes around but yes next up we need to add in a tool which for me will be Gmail so to do that I just clicked to add in a tool then I typed in Gmail and I selected it and then I was greeted with this, a terrifying looking menu screen. <laughs> Ugh. And would you look at that, it's once again asking us to add in another credential. Luckily though this time it actually turned out to be much simpler to figure out, which I was happy with. All I had to do was select to add and connect my Gmail account to it, so that was much easier than I initially expected. But yes, after that I then had to go through and choose its settings. Luckily though, again, this turned out to be easier than I had initially expected. N8N had 
had built into it an option that allowed you to add a tag, which gave the AI the ability to generate an email title for you using its intelligence to come up with it. So I just added this tag in for all of the options. And then after that, I clicked to add an option and selected to append the N8N attribution and I turned it off so that I wouldn't get that little annoying sent by N8N message with each email that I sent. And then I just closed it. And that was it, Gmail had now been added. So now what was left was to tell my agent how to act. By default, if you click on it, you'll see that it's been set up to be a helpful assistant. And you can change this. So for example, you can change it to speak like a pirate. And now if we close it and then reopen the chat and talk to our agent, it'll now be replying like a pirate. But yeah, I went and deleted that since, well, I don't actually want it to talk like a pirate, you know? And so then I put it to the test. I opened up the chat window and asked it to send an email with a question to a specific email address and I sent it. And the agent then processed the request and it worked. I received this email here at the correct email address that I added. Although you can see it signed it off with a placeholder name. So to fix that, I opened up my AI agent and I told it in its instructions on how to act to sign off all emails with my name, Sarah. Then I went and opened up the chat window again and I told it to once again send an email and this time it signed it off with my name Sarah which was great so that's how you can keep customizing it to get it to act the way that you want. So yes, it's a very simple little agent that I've made today, but I don't mind that it's simple because my goal here wasn't to try to make something super complex, you know? Instead, I just wanted to prove to myself that if I use a video tutorial that I could create an agent without having to use any coding and I did, so I think that's great. Although I will admit, that even though I haven't had to code anything, the learning curve to creating these has definitely been higher than I was expecting. But yes, either way, I consider today a success, so we will leave it here for today, and I will see you all again tomorrow. Okay, so it is day three, and I have been thinking about what my next plan of action is gonna be. Yep, because here's the thing, right? Now that we know how to make AI agents, we now have to reach out to businesses and find one that would like an agent built for them. Then we can come to YouTube and find a tutorial to copy to build it for them. And then we can negotiate a payment to create it. That's how we can make money doing the side hustle. And I can imagine that a lot of people are thinking, well, okay, Sarah, making the AI agent, that's the easy part. The hard part, Sarah, the hard part is actually getting clients. How can I get somebody to buy my agent from me? That's the part that a lot of people struggle with the most. And honestly, I'm not entirely surprised. Most tutorials I watch that teach the side hustle seem to recommend paid advertising like Google or Facebook ads as a way to find clients. But well, studies have consistently shown that people trust advertising less and less. And so instead, what they really trust is word of mouth and personal recommendations. And you know, here's the thing, right? I've run an agency before and I've made a lot of money using the word of mouth strategy. Because you know how if you go to Google and do a search for keywords that some websites show up first? Well, you can make tweaks to websites to rank them higher in the search results. This is called SEO, search engine optimization. And I used to have a successful SEO agency selling my services. And word of mouth was my main way of getting clients. What I did was I joined all of the local co-working spaces I could. I paid their lowest cost fee and periodically worked from each of them. And inevitably everyone would chat either at the weekly social events or even just while making coffee, honestly. And whenever I chatted, the conversations would inevitably be the same. People would be like, oh, what do you do, Sarah? And I'd be like, oh, I do SEO for clients. And then they'd be like, oh man, I have a friend that needs an SEO company to do SEO for them. Are you taking on any new clients at this time? So yeah, spending my marketing budget on joining co-working spaces to build up my in-person contacts was, in my opinion, a much better investment than I would have gained paying for advertising. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna go and email all of my contacts that I've already built from joining these co-working spaces and reach out to them and find out if anyone is looking to buy an agent. And then, if I can, I will build it for them and earn money. So yes, I'm gonna start canvassing my word of mouth context now, and I will get back to you in a few weeks with my results. Okay, so it is now day 28, and a very important question remains. How much money have I actually made? And it's a good question, right? So let's first of all discuss customer acquisition. 
I did get a customer interested in an AI agent. They wanted a sales scoring lead agent, which is actually a pretty cool agent. So what these do in theory is they're able to read all of the emails and messages that a customer receives through its inboxes and its social media channels, such as Facebook and Instagram. Then next, the agent will identify which emails and messages are sent from customers that are showing direct interest in buying products or services. Then the agent will apply a lead score to the message, which is just a fancy way of saying they wanted the agent to assign a numeric value of how likely a customer was to buy on a scale of 1 to 100. For customers that score highly, the agent would then redirect the message to the sales team, who would then personally reach out to the customer to try and close the sale. But if it scored lower, it would then instead be sent to the marketing team, who would then send the customer marketing emails instead, such as sending them a free trial email. That way the marketing team can nurture the potential lead so that in the future, one day, they might wanna buy from them. So yes, I had my first request, and again, I thought it was actually a pretty cool request. And so next up, I had to see if I could make the agent. So I went onto YouTube and did a search for tutorial videos showing how to set up a sales lead scoring agent, and I could not find one. Like I found this one here, but it could only score leads captured from one simple web form, not from intelligently reading and scanning emails and social media accounts. And I found this tutorial here. At first I got excited because the thumbnail showed a really complex sales lead agent that had lots of different nodes attached to it. And so I thought, okay, Cool. maybe some of the nodes that I'm seeing in this thumbnail will be related to scoring a lead. And so I can just watch the tutorial, find out which nodes that they used, and then just copy those. But then I watched the tutorial and it didn't actually show how to add all of the nodes. Instead, it just showed how to build the first part, which was basically just a lead sales calendar agent. The video then ended saying that if I wanted to, I could then add extra additional nodes on top of this basic sales lead sales agent that they had built so that I could make my own agent that looked like the one in the thumbnail. So yeah, I discovered that most tutorials on YouTube, even if they look like they're gonna show you a really advanced complex agent, often only show you a basic one. And look, I understand why, because a lot of the basic video tutorials would then also end with a call to action saying that if I wanted to make even better, more niche AI agents, that I could join their school classes for more tutorials, which oftentimes came with extra membership costs. And so, you know what? If I had actually bothered to join the right classes, I could have gained access to a more advanced collection of tutorials, and I could have found one that taught me how to build more niche advanced agents. And I considered doing that, but it was kind of hard to figure out which school classes were going to teach you how to build which types of AI agents. And so I wasn't sure which one to join, so I didn't join any. Instead, I decided, well, why not open up N8N myself and just try and build one from scratch and wing it to see if I could figure it out. But of course, pretty much immediately I got stuck. As a non-techie person, I didn't know which tools to add, and even if I did have an idea of which tool to add, each time you add in a tool, you then have to understand which parameters and settings to pick for it to be able to achieve your client's goals. And so yes, while it is indeed true, you can absolutely in theory build AI agents without code, you will still need technical knowledge if you want to be able to build agents for clients from scratch, meaning that I think that this is a side hustle which has a fairly high learning curve for most people. Which also isn't necessarily a bad thing, you know, because it's probably a big part of why businesses are paying a lot of money for these right now. Because AI agents aren't super easy for people to make due to the fact that you need specialized technical knowledge of what these tools are that you plug into them, along with specialized technical knowledge of the right way to configure their settings. This then increases their perceived value, raising up the prices and profit that you can make. So yes, if you have this knowledge already, or if you have the sort of brain that is good at learning techy things, then this experience has taught me that yes, starting an AI agent agency can indeed earn you money. However, I don't have that sort of brain, and so as you can probably guess, the grand total that I made from doing this side hustle is, drum roll please, I made zero dollars. Yes, I made zero dollars. <laughs> So yes, I think that I will personally stick to selling my t-shirts instead, as this is honestly a much better fit for my more artistic, less technical brain. But yes, I hope that you enjoyed this video anyway, and if you would like to learn about even more ways to earn money online, be sure to check out my next video here on screen, and I will see you in the next video.